portion of the information about social entrepreneurship. Probably some of you know about it. Uh, some of you had chance to work with social enterprises. Other of you know. So I think that today we will try today and during these next days we'll try to uh, to provide a um, portion of knowledge, uh, good practices, um, some, you know, um, concept how we can work together, what is important in our work, how to support uh, social entrepreneurship development, how we can use our talents, competences, also something what we can learn from other, from other countries, from other examples. So, um, um, we will start today with the presentation of Nikita Kusnikova. She's our uh, expert also for the project support to social enterprises. And she works on the policy documents, legal documents. She also will prepare training for the ministry people to, 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 to that they have some monitoring tools uh, when we have strategy, when we have criteria uh, and definition on social enterprises, uh, so then ministry needs to have um, tools to monitor uh, how many social enterprises we have and, and whether they meet the criteria. So there is a comprehensive system which is uh, implemented through our project. I am really happy also to inform you that your minister, Jagoda Szapaska, um, uh, express, expresses her will to visit Poland and Polish solutions. And probably the, the study visit will be organized in the, um, like en at the end of July and beginning of August. Uh, the meeting on Friday will provide more information uh, with this regards, but this is also very promising that uh, ministry is interested to see, to, to touch, also to meet Polish Minister of Labour Social Policy, to see Polish solutions at, and to see centers uh, to support of social enterprises in Poland, which we, ha in, we have now in Poland 61 such centers a few in each region, each of 16 regions. So uh, having in mind that this path is in front of you, you will, <laughs> you will also um, uh, develop uh, this concept, I hope, with uh, support of legal and policy documents and with your passion and with your inspiration, we can really change a lot and support a lot of people and support sustainable local development and also, you know, uh, uh, inclusion and protection of environment. There are some important elements Mm, a mission of social enterprises. It will be uh, presented by Nikica. So Nikica, please, this is your place now for, for your presentation. Thank you very much, Barbara. Zdravo na sita. Za tije koji što nema znajete. Hello everyone. For those who do not know me, my name is Nikica. I am uh, committed to my child uh, association connect formally and formally in every respect. So part of you I've known, I've met already uh, through my cooperation with the organization, but for many years I've cooperated with Barbara and with the Aptisa project for support to social enterprises, both in the first phase and now in the continuation in the follow-up phase. For those in need for interpretation, the slides of my presentation are in English, but I will speak Macedonian. Whoever needs interpretation can feel free to uh, click the globe at the bottom right and to choose the language of preference along with Mute Original Audio so that you can follow uh, the event easily with interpretation. Now, uh, this topic on of social entrepreneurship, social enterprises. I started uh, elaborating on this in more depth back in 2006, when 
one of the first examples I shared was the Barca Foundation. And Barbara will speak a lot more about the social entrepreneurship in Poland. But I, when I first heard of Barca, I was astonished. So I really felt the need in every text, presentation, document that I was preparing to share the example of Barca because their story is so inspirational and I'm very happy. And I was very happy when uh, Barbara arrived to Macedonia and when she told me that she's one of the founders of Barca, basically all the pieces of the puzzle met together. So I'm so happy that after a decade uh, afterwards, now I have the opportunity to meet, I had the opportunity to meet in person with Barbara to work on development of social entrepreneurship here in the country. So hopefully through these trainings and this process, you will also become infected with the social entrepreneurship the way I have been infected with social entrepreneurship and the cause and the promotion of and development of social enterprises in the country. Today, I was tasked with informing you in more detail about the essence of social entrepreneurship and what social enterprises are and to respond to some of the dilemmas that you might have when getting in touch, when learning about the concept of social entrepreneurship. So feel free to raise any questions because through my presentation, I will open different aspects of social entrepreneurship and enterprises and I will illustrate with the examples. But I urge you to ask questions either in the chat box or to ask for the floor, to ask for clarification. So I'd like to, do, to modify my presentation into discussion basically. So feel free to interrupt me. So at the very start, when I uh, start with the introduction to what social enterprises are, it would be useful that you reflect yourselves on what social enterprises you know. You can share this information with your colleagues in the chat box as well. So during my presentation, you can also reflect with your answers whether all you know and all you have experiences experienced about social entrepreneurship matches with what I'm going to present to you now. And we can discuss about all the dilemmas that might emerge when you are hearing or contemplating on the concept of social enterprises. You see the presentation before you, I hope. I will start with the present with a definition with the, which the European Commission within its social business initiative has drafted as an operational definition of what social enterprises are, which more or less has been accepted uh, throughout the EU. And uh, all of Europe basically reflects to this definition when they speak about social enterprises. And this is that social enterprises are those entities whose primary objective for the primary objective for the business for the commercial activity is to uh, reap a social profit, albeit environmental, social, or whichever. We will see which types of activities or missions can happen with the social enterprises. However, the business is driven by the idea that there is a social problem, social need, which through the business can be resolved. And often this is done with a high degree of uh, social innovation. As a rule, social enterprises innovate new solutions where the classical business does not see its business interest. And usually social enterprises carry out the transformation of the way in which we perceive business. And you will see this later through the examples which we're going to share. Moreover, what is also typical for social enterprises as part of their function is that the profit which is generated by this enterprise is mainly reinvested with a view to achieving that social objective that has been set forth. So the objective is not for the founders of the company to maximize their profit, but to maximize 
the social value, the purpose for which this enterprise has been established. And what's also important, how is this demonstrated by the social enterprises through the manner in which it is managed and the ownership structure. With the social enterprises, the ownership structure basically reflects the social and uh, the social mission of the enterprise itself. So there is a participatory approach to management. In other words, there is no decision making or management done by one person or several persons, shareholders who have established the business. No, there is broader involvement of different stakeholders depending on the social mission of this particular enterprise. And this is how, through this entire line of work, the enterprise manifests its commitment to the social mission. I'm sure all of you have seen this, all of you who have had, your, who have had the opportunity to read about social enterprises. These are the three dimensions we are talking about. And we can illustrate through examples. And you will see, which is the spectrum that we may have. So the social, the broader social mission is one thing. It has to have, it has to be explicitly identified. So whatever it is that the social enterprise does has to be spearheaded towards maximizing the social mission, which means that the social enterprise itself limits the manner in which it will distribute the profit and use the funding. So with the social enterprises, as we said, there is a limitation of the distribution of profit, but also of the basic uh, working tools. So the social enterprise limits itself that they will serve the broader social mission and will not be uh, expropriated for personal private use. So the safeguards that we're mentioning here uh, are very important, defending the social objective. No matter the air, the field of work, healthcare, culture, environment, etc. Moreover, from the perspective of the entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial activity, it's very important that it is continuous. Uh, we, we're not speaking about intermittent uh, economic activities. So it's not that once a year we're going to uh, install a stand on some fair and sell some souvenirs. That does not make us a social enterprise. It's not the economic, the entrepreneurial activity has to take place in continuity. Of course, by involving volunteers as a real social enterprises, involve a great many volunteers. Why? Because of the social mission it fulfills. This comes natural. And this is aspect, aspect of the inclusive and transparent governance, accountability to the broader mission, impartiality, independence, of the social enterprise from the state, but also from the profit companies and corporations. Again, with the mission of protecting the primary social mission of the social enterprises. And basically, ideally speaking, the social enterprises would be best positions in the intersection of all the three uh, circles. And a very common question that comes up during any discussion, and I'm sure most of you have heard of the terms social enterprise, social entrepreneurship, and social business. My question to you would be, uh, where is the difference between these three concepts in your opinion? Of course, I will elaborate in more detail on these three concepts, at least the way European literature elaborates or explains or defines these three concepts. But would, would some of you like to join in for the sake of a more interactive discussion uh, and uh, elaborate what these three concepts mean? 
feel free if you want to take the floor to just turn on the microphone and uh, share your opinion with the others. No? Nobody wants to break the ice to share with us what is what, which is which. If not, then I will clarify these three notions for you. There is a very often a dilemma occurring everywhere, not only in our country, but on all the fora where this topic is discussed. These uh, questions are opened up. Social enterprises are a separate entity. They're formally established entity, which has a continued economic activity. Unlike the social entrepreneurship, which is a broad concept, encompassing all sorts of initiatives and activities and entrepreneurial activities from any type of entity, which can happen within a company, an association, even institution. It can be also an initiative raised by individuals. What differentiates a lot these two concepts is the collective dimension. So the social enterprises are based primarily on the value of the collective, of the community, of the unity, of the solidarity. This is the distinguishing element, unlike the other two, entrepreneurship and business. In these two, the focus is on the individual, on the entrepreneur. So from this perspective, the social businesses are somewhere between the social enterprise and social entrepreneurship. The social businesses are a separate, let's say, production unit or entity, which carries out a certain economic activity for a broader social interest with the primary uh, mission of serving the society. But in the social businesses, often ownership belongs with a single in a person, an individual. Whereas in the social enterprises, because of that inclusive principle of management, as we mentioned, the focus is more on this tradition of collective uh, action of the citizens, of the community in a way. And this makes these concepts different. And you will see through the examples, what we in Macedonia have are many initiatives for social entrepreneurship, which have the tendency of growing into social enterprises, or social businesses. Therefore, when we discuss the ecosystem, this, this project will further on raise different discussions uh, for the sake of the law, the criteria and all that. But at this point, we have to clarify that right now there are plenty of initiatives in the area of social entrepreneurship, which aspire towards becoming social enterprises, which presently, perhaps in its current development stage, are still not fully socially, full-fledged social enterprises, speaking from the perspective of the ideal form of a social enterprise. Without further ado, you have probably seen this data that social enterprises in the EU take up a significant portion of the economy. So 10% of the economy, uh, at least, uh, almost one in every four newly established social uh, companies is a social enterprise. And at the time of the financial crisis, they prove, they, they, they prove themselves to be more resilient, more resistant to the financial crisis because they rely on the unity, on the solidarity of the community. And they were not so much dependent on the global flows of the economy. And this is why it was easier for them to um overcome the crisis unfortunately the covid pandemic influenced all the companies including the social enterprises however the principle of solidarity is something that often helps the social enterprises uh 
recover from the crisis because the focus is on the business, uh, on the on the social business, in order to cause some positive changes in the society. Another important thing is that the social enterprises can be active in any area other than those which are not in some conflicting interests, such as production of weapons, uh, alcohol, uh, tobacco, etc., where we there is no broader social benefit. However, uh, the most visible types of social enterprises, Barbara will illustrate this into more detail, are for work integration of the vulnerable categories. So, uh, generally in the Balkans also, there is a tendency for establishing of such type of enterprises because of social exclusion of great many groups in the society. Very often what we see present are social enterprises offering different social services of general interest in social care, in health services, etc. These are very frequent also. It, they can be social enterprises active in the environmental area as well, in the area of education that often that offer specific educational services. They can be found in culture, tourism, the fair trade was given as an example as well. So from the perspective of cooperation of underdeveloped countries with the developed one, so to favor global development, literally it can happen in almost every line of work. And how this looks in brief, there you see in several different examples for illustration sake. In Europe, the first example with the windmill is the trend of the so-called energy cooperatives. These are energy cooperatives where the citizens uh, themselves organize themselves and this is open to any citizen. So the citizens are investing themselves into renewable energy sources for energy efficient solutions. So at that point, every citizen becomes owner of these, let's say, solar panel parks or windmill parks, depending on how many resources will be generated. So all together, they decide what will be the electricity price and uh, they make sure that this is always a fair price so that even those with lower income can afford this energy. And this is how the energy supply room is saved for all the citizens also, and given also in the hands of the citizens, not only in the big energy companies. And this is a trend. Personally, I'm very much keen on establishing this uh, concept of the social uh, enterprise where we could be very successful or the example of a kindergarten so one social enterprise in france offer a specific type of service in the form of a kindergarten so for supporting children at their school age or educating children and uh, helping children, not only the kindergarten, but also in their house. What is specific for these, um, for this company, that 60% of its users or beneficiaries are persons of lower income, um, single parents, families, 24 hours a day, seven days a week of support is offered to these people who work in shifts so that they will have a person who will help their child write homework, uh, pick them up from school, deliver them. And the payment is according to the income of the person. So those with lower income, um, those with lower income uh, pay less, those with higher income pay more. And this is how the financial construction is, let's say tallied or balanced. But this is all structured on the principle of solidarity 
uh, uh, and this is the type of service which which the classical guard uh, kindergartens are not using. In Comprivnica in Croatia, they wanted uh, to base the entire process of recycling on eco principles. They have eco. They have a possibility to storage uh, a big quantities of uh, of waste, and uh, they also distribute uh, paper uh, board uh, uh, packages uh, for collecting paper uh, from home, which would something I would really love. And then they take it to the companies, which in cooperation with the utility service company. Uh, reuse it or re uh, manufacture it in order and now they're in the process of turning uh, uh, transferring this way of operation to the municipal um, utility service company what we should understand is that in the course of these 21st centuries uh, the way of looking at uh, the actors in the society has changed. In the 20th century and before, in a way, there was a opposed opposition. Bit, op there was a, some kind of opposition. Either you're a non-profit organization, you deal strictly with social issues, or you're a company which is established strictly for generating profit and uh, you operate on the open market and there was a lit and there was no real uh, communication between these two sides the new global challenges and the way the society develops today created a continuum i cannot even say that we are talking about gray zone we are talking about a rainbow a full pluralism in the different forms and ways of that uh, business continuum where those who are on the left side the more you're to the left of this uh, scale the more it means that the social mission dominates the more you're towards the right the primary motive for uh, work is the profit and all these forms have their own particular role in the society and are important to have them. But when we talk about social entrepreneurship, we have to have in mind uh, the, the ability to establish in different uh, countries, the regulations define differently these aspects. But uh, from a conceptual point of view, it's very important to know that these borders uh, are no longer uh, that strictly defined you we as you as resource points you'll have an interesting task to recognize these forms in your countries in your sorry in your communities in your regions and to provide support to those who want to grow into social enterprises to do that basically to provide them with that assistance it means that not every all the companies have to become social enterprises not all associations even if they have economic activities will become social enterprises furthermore there is diversity also in regard to the management principles we shouldn't think that there is only one approach depending on the type of uh, social enterprises some social enterprise like with the association and with the commune uh, and with the communes one member one vote and all the uh, members participate uh, in the decision making sometimes it's very important to involve everybody associations if we if we, you are employing uh, people with disabilities who participate in the decision making process so there are different forms but you will see that these principles of inclusive management mean involvement of the greater of the broader segments of the society of the community and not only of the uh, 
stakeholders like uh, with the people on the right side where you have those people who make the decisions it's very important to know who is making decisions in that uh, enterprise and what i really uh, need you help me to understand that process of transformation and creating uh, social enterprises was that uh, triangle where we have the three key motives to uh, join people. The first one is the interest of the capital, where usually we have the traditional companies where the primary motive is to uh, create, develop capital. Then, uh, then we have the mutual interest, like uh, cooperatives uh, and com communes or associations that serve solely the members. We have a group of people who uh you they have joint interest and want to serve that interest for example it could be an economic interest of the members of uh, farmers who produce agricultural products so the and then you have the public interest where usually we have the public institutions and many of the uh, civil society organizations where the primary motive is uh, the social uh, benefit and what we see in practice when we generate these uh, social enterprises. Uh, I just want to show you the scale. Those which are generally established for public interest are usually funded by public funds, either from the budget or donations, donations, grants, whatever. While in, uh, down there below where the capital interest is and this uh, uh, mutual interest, we have the, the, the incomes, the revenues are generated on the market. What happens in the practice? We have hybrid forms, a certain level of uh, their development. Many associations realize that in order to help their mission or their target groups that they serve, that it's not enough for them to deal with uh, humanitarian activities or representation that they need to start some kind of entrepreneurial activity in order to have a permanent impact in achieving that mission and they start with entrepreneurial activities and gradually they become they are getting closer to this area of social entrepreneurship and some of them become social enterprises uh, the same happens with those who serve the interest of their members. The same goes for the uh, communes. Uh, unfortunately, in our country, the, this is not so present in our country, like in Italy, France, Spain, where the, this move, movement uh, of cooperatives, sorry, uh, exists a lot, especially social cooperatives. Uh, as I mentioned, the the case, the example with the energy cooperatives, and it's not, they're not serving of only the interest, but the, the interest of the broader uh, community. And also a classical business, usually we are talking about small businesses, could decide uh, that they prefer to focus on the social mission that they see the business by achieving some. Uh, having some impact, uh, positive impact on the society, and they start changing their principles of management, their ways of uh, management, and turn, uh, uh, they turn towards social enterprises. So rarely in our country we'll see the ideal model of social enterprise, but always with these forms that gradually as you will see in Poland, with the development become uh, social enterprises. So, 
so even though if it's association uh, or a company, uh, it could become a an, an social enterprise or it could uh, um, develop a new legal form, just like it was the case with some of the examples I'm going to present. Or in the interest of time, I'm just uh, sharing them faster. For example, in a collective uh, part of that institution or an enterprise to create a new uh, entity that will develop as a social enterprise or a group of citizens to, to join like with the energy collectives and establish a separate entity. So literally the ways in which uh, the social enterprises are established are different unlike uh, the other forms that we come across. What is the situation at the moment in our country? We do not have uh, consistent data because in general, the social enterprises are yet to be recognized and identified. They're not sufficiently visible and we do not have, and the country and the state has no mechanisms available to consistently follow them. Uh, so mainly we are talking about small or micro companies, which are usually in the phase of developing a business plan or they already have a business plan and they're testing the business model. There is only a small number of social enterprises that are in some kind of mature phase of, uh, de of uh, development or, or represent an important player. They have different missions, both social and uh, societal, uh, but uh, the focus mainly is to integrate the vulnerable groups for the having in mind the context in which we live. The social cooperatives are uh, less uh, representative, or represented almost non-existent. And that's why we say we have many initiatives in the area of uh, social entrepreneurship that are yet to become social enterprises. Many of them at the moment are funded through grants. They are still not independent for self to be self-sustainable uh, or self-funding through their economic uh, activity. So that's where your role lies to help them to start to become stable and to be able to develop. I mean, I'm sure that uh, with your experience, you will mean, uh, you will succeed in it because all of you come from regions that are. Uh, uh, impacted by the local and regional development. It's very important. And the examples show why the social enterprises are so important. The ex examples often uh, offer particular uh, services that uh, do not uh, provide services to others, but uh, they provide services locally. They're usually developed locally. They employ local people and do not uh, uh, employ globally. Usually they're very much um, in rooted in the local communities that uh, support the entrepreneurship spirit because they have a transformation through the business and they're basically stimulating entrepreneurship spirit and to, uh, in order to deal with social inequality in the uh, society. And just a couple of uh, more additional uh, examples, for example, from the region, some of the more ex uh, successful social enterprises. L on the uh, left, uh, the enterprise Fana is a social business because the founder is a young uh, woman entrepreneur who works, uh, who has as employees, people with disabilities or people uh, from belonging to vulnerable groups. And basically they may one of uh, the, its main um, activities is sustainability of resources, in this case, the wood, and uh, they produce uh, upscale uh, wood. Uh, so basically reusing wood. So it, they employ more than a hundred people 
from vulnerable categories, usually young people belonging to vulnerable categories. Um, so individuals who had problems with the law uh, or belonging to ethnic minorities, Roma, for example, young people with disabilities, um, orphans, etc. This is a company called YAPS. Uh, they have a turnover of more than a million euros. Their services are in, they provide distribution of uh, packages, also cleaning services and uh, maintenance services in households and institutions. And they take their share uh, in the market in Tirana is about uh, 15, uh, 13 percent, 10 percent. They have a 10 percent profit and it's reinvested part in the company itself and the other part for activities uh, for the association, for the youth association for in Bosnia and Herzegovina and Serbia. We have examples. If you're in this, uh, in the textile industry, we have two examples from um, Bosnia, Funky Guerrilla, which is a youth institution. They develop them from scratch, uh, clothes for young people. They employ young people in the social enterprise and the generated uh, profits uh, go to the association's uh, uh, programs for youth support in their community. And uh, uh, then there is another company with a similar concept, uh, but the focus are on women, Udružene. Uh, they have only online sale uh, and uh, for needed products. So uh, also bamboo uh, diapers, uh, dye dye. Uh, I'm just giving you different examples because these uh, social enterprises in Serbia is focusing on the environment and they have patent, uh, they have a patent for reusable bamboo uh, diapers and just a few examples from Macedonia. You probably know about Pokrov, this from Strumica, you have all probably uh, visited them as social enterprise, which is probably one of the most developed uh, ones in our country. They started with organic production of uh, fruits and vegetables as part of the programs for integration and resocialization of of uh, drug uh, and alcohol uh, users. Uh, as well as individuals uh, with gambling uh, problems. They have already become a serious producer. Uh, when it comes to the social enterprise, their target groups uh, have expanded also to people with disabilities. Uh, so you, will, you can find uh, some of their products in Phoenix. And we basically, we facilitated that collaboration so that Phoenix would offer uh, their produce in their shops. And, uh, since, uh, and since 2019, they have another uh, social enterprise, Bagel Bakery, uh, inspired by similar enterprises in uh, Belgrade and Tirana. Uh, so Bagel Bakery, where they offer uh, different producers, including salads from their own produce. And uh, basically we have a circular economy. Uh, the last time I talked uh, to Socrates, he already he said that they already employ 40 people as part of their social enterprise. Genuine experiences. Uh, we had the, we heard their presentation. Uh, Barbara already uh, used their services, a social enterprise by the Struga um, Association of, uh, for the purpose of promoting the social uh, 
uh, mission of responsible tourism and support of the small uh, family businesses. Basically, they link, they connect uh, the tourists with these local um, businesses in order to experience the local traditions. Uh, so in different areas, food uh, offer, offers by small uh, artisan shops. Barbara maybe can go into more details what they have of that what they offer as uh, services uh, citing to us in Okrit and Struve. Fifty percent of the of uh, these uh, revenues go for the producers. So the idea is through business to transform the models, um, uh, to transform the entire structure of the community so that these families wouldn't be just uh, beneficiaries, um, to be empowered to support the local community. 20% goes to marketing and uh, and the others uh, the rest of the money go for the expenditures of the business and for the programs of the business and one more example the Arna association who have as uh, as one of the economic activities they organize uh, slow food cooking classes that social mission is to support in the integration and the economic strengthening of the students from the culinary school that come from uh, poorer families. So from the vulnerable categories of uh, families and to help these young people to complete the education and to be integrated on the labor market. And these classes, for example, are offered to companies, individuals, so we have a kind of a different structure of funding of the services of the social enterprise. This is just as illustration. There are many, uh, there are many others, uh, many other initiatives. And once again, what I want to say is that in practice, most of these examples that we talked about, about social enterprises, usually operate as part of existing associations. Usually that's the form you come across where the, an association establishes some kind of program, develops a program for social entrepreneurship. They establish uh, basically uh, a social enterprise which is to develop uh, and uh, to develop its own identity, independent identity. So once again, I will say there are no limitations uh, when it comes to the legal uh, forms. It could be registered both as a business and as a, a collective. Or It's very important to go back to the key three elements and always reflect how they have been applied, how they function in that uh, social enterprise. I will stop the presentation here to give space for questions, for discussion. Barbara is here to join us. Yes, I would like to join you. Yes, in fact, we plan to have it in the end, but it is better to have questions now because it is very fresh presentation, very interesting. And Nikita also presented with passion because she also believes that this is something what can really put uh, things in the right uh, place and in more justice world here in Macedonia. So please ask the question. I think that it is uh, a few very interesting elements um, were presented, like continuing of business, like starting from non-profit through a partially profit uh, return to uh, organization with social impact and then 
with maximization of profit. So it is really spectrum and we have to uh, know how to distinguish and what are, uh, yes, what are the uh, differences between um, these uh, four types of different um, um, entities, but they are in this continuum. It is very, very interesting. Exactly. And another thing that's very important and often comes up in discussion, not every green enterprise active in the business of renewables, recycling, etc., is a social enterprise. So many of them are classical enterprises, companies, which have a strong component of contributing to the social mission, to the advancement of the social mission. However, they do not identify themselves as social enterprises, nor do they lack this collective dimension, which is so much present in the social enterprises. They are liking the principle of solidarity, I have to say. This is more, in a way, contributing to the sustainable, sustainable development through a classical enterprise, which is okay, just like the example that we witnessed with the energy cooperatives. So in this business, in this entire broad spectrum of forms, which are all dealing in the sector of renewable energy sources, we can have a broad spectrum of entities from one to the other end. So the energy cooperatives are one form of social enterprise where the focus is on democratization of the energy sector. Not because this is current now, a very topical and now it's very fashionable that we make a profit out of, it, out of this. No, it's important to make energy ownership of all the citizens so that everyone can have a benefit out of reusable energy sources and contribute not only to the sustainable development, but also to receive electricity at a more affordable price, price agreed by everyone, which makes sense to the common citizens. And uh, this is where I perceive these transformational processes occurring in the 21st century. So, put simply, the needs of the communities nowadays impose such new innovative forms. Same with the example of the kindergarten. You can have a kindergarten, you can have kindergartens in the entire spectrum. We have associations that organize kindergartens or types of uh, children uh, care services for, I don't know, uh, children of addicts, self-supporting parents and others which are offered for free, which are sometimes funded by grants, which is also okay. Excellent, it should exist. We have private kindergartens also, which are fully private, which provide high quality services to persons who can afford this price. And in the middle, we have this entire spectrum, just like the example that I mentioned earlier, uh, of kindergartens that perceive a certain need. And here business is used as a transformation to help facilitate something which has been missing offering a new value in the community. And not all companies should be pushed to become social enterprises. Those which are inspired to do this, to embark on this mission will decide themselves that they should transform themselves and develop a social enterprise, no problem. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, Nikita, how uh, we as a region as a court. Uh, uh, sorry for interrupting you, Barbara. I think Susanna wanted to ask something. Yes, please. Uh, greetings, everyone. Nikita, special greetings to you. Uh, this has been an excellent, uh, detailed presentation, a very focused, let's say, presentation, focused explanation, very topical one. This will be more of a question, but a confirmation of my thinking as well. So by providing such a broader spectrum, basically this opens up the, opens up the, the possibility that all centers, including the Skopje Center, enable 
the social entrepreneurship and all the initiatives of the false social entrepreneurship to define themselves, to decide whether they want to develop into social enterprises or social businesses. And this is where I perceive, let's say, the role of the social centers by their helping to map out these still undefined initiatives. So, Nikiza, how do you perceive from your point of view, what is it that we could as centers support? Because to my opinion, I don't know how we could define the social component in the businesses or the social, how could the social enterprises, uh, how could they highlight their social benefit? And secondly, because you asked for volunteers, I volunteer to be a volunteer for energy cooperative. I will help in every way possible that we uh, develop fully this initiative for energy cooperative. Because essentially, if we demonstrate that this example is doable, and this is extremely useful to everyone, regardless of whether we speak of businesses or socially disadvantaged categories, if we are to develop such an initiative and then seek support, which I'm sure will come, this will be an additional boost for social entrepreneurship generally in the country. Excellent. Susanna, thank you very much for joining in this discussion, I have to say. When you work with different beneficiaries and those, some of them know already, as a rule, Geras is present here and other representatives of, of enterprises are present here. They have already identified and the very uh, clear cut idea that they do want to transform themselves into social enterprise, but that very often what they lack is know-how, how to transform their businesses into sustainable businesses. So what they need is support to develop their entrepreneurial spirit. As a rule, they're guided by the mission. Yes. And as a rule, because they're an association, they do have some form of participation, decision-making, consultation, input, etc. But what they miss often is the skills of core business management from the perspective of the business plan itself, but also from the perspective of sales, financial management, business management, because the associations know how to manage the grants. They know how to do it. But very, hard, very often it's difficult for them to restructure themselves into planning and deciding on businesses and which business steps to take, et cetera. And very often they have a problem delineating between what, it is, what is it that the association is doing and what the social enterprise is doing. And this is where they will need the support to encourage, uh, to step up, develop their knowledge for to strengthen the social enterprise so that the enterprise this enterprise can become, become an entity of its own sustainable one. The companies already have this entrepreneurial spirit. They recognize the market opportunities. The challenge there is for them to, just, to transform the manner in which they guide the business, lead the business from primary individualist approach towards more collectivist one. So this cannot be pushed. Nor should we tell them, no, this, you have to do this and that's it. No, this is a process. And very often this process uh, happens through a discussion. Sometimes when you see that there is an opportunity, for instance, in the environmental area or in the, or a certain vulnerable category of citizens, through dialogue, discussion, how, you dis how, you, how do you include these groups? Have you consulted to hear out the opinion of these groups? Or you ask them, do you have a mechanism of how you can consult the, the other associations active in environment or renewable sources, let's say, this is going to be our focus. So through a dialogue, discussion, 
to present different forms, and this will start gradual. So they will develop their own board. You ask them, what is it that you do with the profit, with the revenue? How do you spend the ref revenue? How do you make sure that you will achieve, you will achieve the maximum effect? How do you decide on employing, on recruiting persons? When you're a social enterprise committed to integration of vulnerable groups or supporting or economic integration of any vulnerable group, whenever you take decisions on recruitment, you, this has to be your guiding principle. You cannot base your decision on, oh, this is my most productive employee, I will keep him or her, no. And these are very difficult decisions and you have to be guided by what is best for this particular vulnerable category of persons. I will consult them. Perhaps jointly we can come up to a most agreeable solution. So they have to be uh, thinking about the process, processes of consultation. How transparent am I? with uh, the way how I spend my profit revenue. Is my profit invested in the social cause or mission or do we use it to buy luxury vehicles? If we buy vehicles, do we invest in electric vehicles if we're a company committed to environment? So how decisions, management decisions are reached, you live your social missions also through those decisions. So you guide them through this discussion, you give them options, and this process will go gradual in these companies. It is a process taking place gradually, and part of them will be willing. For instance, in Europe, such enterprises, business companies, family companies, family companies are often transformed into social enterprises. Why? Because often, uh, they don't have heirs or the children are not interested in to continuing the business, but they don't want their business to die out. They're so much connected to the community, to the employee, they offer the business to the employees. And this is how the company is transformed into a company owned by the community. In Croatia, we have such an example, I forgot the name of the company, whereby in socialism, when companies were privatized, employees in this community decided to buy up the company. They managed to find the money from here, there, different sources in the privatization process. They purchased the company because they did not want the company to die out. Everything which is generated as profit, persons working there are from the local community and all of them invest in the improvement of the infrastructure of their local community, whatever, is, whatever they need, kindergarten, sports centers, support to the poor, to the poor groups in that community, which resembles terribly, which resembles a great deal of the concept of socialism that we had. Instead of private ownership, there is collective ownership, which we used to have. But this is a process that comes from within. Nobody can impose this on, on them. You can only uh, motivate them to explore the different possibilities, options, wherever you see potential and desire for them to transform so gradually. Thank you very much. Daliborka, uh, you asked for the floor as well. Yes, you, of course you can ask a question, Daliborka. Then we have Daliborka Zlateva who wrote in the, hello everyone, just briefly. I would like to say, because I'm at work in a little bit of different conditions. Greetings to all. I'm very happy to be part of these trainings. We as NGO are Association of Persons with Cerebral Paralysis and other uh, disabilities from Vélez. Currently, we are implementing a project which hopefully will lead us to developing social enterprise. So this training is very timely. We speak of growing lavender and other herbs and their processing and uh, creating pro uh, products such as teas and the oils, etheric oils, etc. So we want to involve in this process persons with disabilities, other disadvantaged groups, women at risk, Roma, 
youth, unemployed youth. But what we will definitely need to do is walk this path and we need help in order to be able to fully implement this and to achieve uh, what is it that we want to achieve. The funds from the social enterprise will help us uh, maintain the social services that we will implement with sign an agreement, housing agreement. We will deinstitutionalize some of the patients, let's say, in the mental center, Demirkapia, which is a very bold step. So I will need all support, all the support you can give us. Please, in the future, if you have any new knowledge, information uh, that will be useful for us, we would very much like to hear about this and to be part of this successful story. Dali Borka, excellent. Good luck. This is one of the examples in which you as an association realize how you can fully achieve your mission for the sake of sustainability of the association and for full integration of your target group to create a social enterprise. And still, this is all within the frameworks of your organization and still within the framework of the social entrepreneurship program. But let us hope now the challenge before you is to make this a, a sustainable business. Yes, and we don't we don't want to stay only at this form. We want to formalize this. We want to develop an enterprise which will be which will be able to hire more people. And uh, we don't want to remain at this present form and to survive from one month to another. No, we truly want to be a success story. And, to be a role model if possible. Indeed, once you achieve a certain more continued production, please contact us, contact me personally in Connect because we connect the social enterprises with the classical companies. And I already, yeah, actually my idea was that we should connect with Herba Stojanovi, who are people which is a company from Kumanovo, but they have their pharmacies in Skopje and they have big services of uh, herbs for treatment and they have their own production of tea, etc. And they offer different uh, products in their pharmacies. We would like to hear from them what would be our next steps. The, uh, it's important that these people also buy up your production. I'd like to find processes Indeed. And uh, another thing that I, we need we should think about is initially we would need help with payment for the persons who will come in the social enterprise. We cannot pay immediately these workers who will be coming to work. We will not be able to pay them regular salary or wages because we need to have a certain turnover before we can achieve this objective. So we're still in the initial stage. This is a wonderful idea and it will be truly a great satisfaction to us if we can pull this off. This is a new, unique thing, something that hasn't existed in Macedonia before. Excellent. And one recommendation, please, those who are managing your social enterprise, separate them, make them separate from those who are managing the association because the biggest chance the challenge and difficulty is when the director of, or of the organization has to play plays a dual role to be a manager of an association and also manager of an enterprise. Yes, hopefully we will be able to divide the management structure because we want both entities to succeed because we are taking big steps here and very successful work. Yes. Thank you very much for your attention. I only Thank would you, like Dali to ask Dali Borka from which place are you? because we have here a meeting of regional support centers and you can also be um, linked with uh, regional support center and we can use our experts to support you to, to find way for transformation or for a, a spin-off process that you have association and you will uh, set up social enterprise so this is also important because I um, would like to mention that we have here today representatives of eight regional support centers and main center from 
copy, but also some organizations, social enterprises uh, existing in, in some of these areas. So we wanted to have possibility to match you, uh, regional centers and social enterprises. So it is one of, of example. Super, super. So we have here also center from Veles. So we will try to, uh, uh, Snehana is from Veles. <laughs> Thank you for giving me the opportunity also to speak. Uh, Dimitar also wanted to say something. Hello, everyone. A few comments on my part with regards to what Nikita was saying and what the others were saying. With regards to the legal form, one of the options is that the social enterprise is like a subsidiary of the civil society organization to see whether it's sustainable. And if it is sustainable, then it can be separated as a separate legal entity. If not, then just like any other project, when the deadline expires, it will be uh, finalized. And with regards to the mindset, it's always easier to uh, set up an enterprise by a business. It's easier for businesses to set up enterprises. So this is why it's better that social enterprises are established by the classical businesses or profit enterprises. But to my opinion, what often is missing is the motivation for this. If uh, usually um, the manager of the company is usually the owner and uh, always they ask themselves, why shouldn't I be working for profit? Why, should not, uh, why shouldn't I be working for myself? Instead, working for the social good, the social responsibility of the enterprises is missing. We need to work on this. Dimitar, I don't think that this Socrat will agree that uh, people from these civil society organizations can establish a successful enterprise. I'm not saying that, just like Nikita, you mentioned to change the mindset or when uh, you have new people for, to, for certain business functions, for example, for marketing, for finances, for management, with some enterprise which already exists uh, and works for profit. So, so it's always more difficult. Most, uh, many classical small businesses start uh, like that. They, they do not uh, immediately start with specialists for marketing and sale, etc. They start gradually and they build it. It doesn't happen overnight. I also wanted to say this, when an uh, enterprise is established, a social enterprise, regardless, even if it's not fully socially, um, uh, cannot survive, they can have an agreement because it's the, the association is going to be the founder of that social enterprise and uh, they can help it with donations continuously with annual donations. It's not a problem to redirect funds from the association to the social enterprise while this until the social enterprise reaches uh, the phase of self-sustainability. And there are certain additional expenses, for example, uh, for 
uh, accounting. Uh, yes, but it's always good for the identity to be defined early on so that the social enterprise would develop its own identity that will make it the re recognizable and management structure. I want to make a comment. I think that after this COVID crisis, at least from my work with young people, I, when I'm talking about young people, I'm saying, uh, I'm talking about young people at the end of high school or uh, in uh, university, or uh, they're much more aware about the social components, about the ecological components, simply, they have changed the per perception of what they want to do in life. And I think that with their involvement, and I'm talking in general, uh, both in the NGO world and social entrepreneurship and social businesses, the entire dynamics will change. They have those skills that are needed, dy being dynamic, uh, marketing, uh, sales uh, abilities and this combination could give uh, good results of course in combination as Dimitar said uh, with adequate leadership team I would say I wouldn't say just uh, a person a manager but to have a leadership team I, I have worked in both in for an enterprise and in the for an NGO, I know that when uh, projections for commercial activities are done, everybody withdraws because that's when it is expected for them to generate certain incomes, and this appears as a bar barrier, at least for people in the NGO sector, because they're more oriented towards program activities and not to generate uh, commercial activities. So basically that's where the biggest uh, difference lies, uh, that proactiveness, uh, to be proactive in what you, what you want to change, to find a service or a product that will respond to the needs of the greater public or will involve people who will be able to provide that service uh, under certain uh, favorable circumstances. And that's where that story uh, lies, that you need to build this, the story from the very beginning. You need to develop a story from the very beginning and uh, your work to reflect what you want to do. That's where your role lies. You need to help them. Uh, they will recognize it. The more sincere you are, the more you give to the, uh, the, to the community, uh, they recognize it. Uh, people want to recognize that. They want to uh, identify themselves from, with, with real life stories and being recognized uh, is also important. Yes. Is it going to be... Um, uh, products with a message or, I don't know, being identified with certain uh, goal of the uh, social enterprise and all that, just like um, this topic was complex about social enterprises, equally complex and broad is everything that the social enterprise will offer because it offers a value, value which... Uh, something you love, you like, and you want to be identified by that value. And I think that's uh, what uh, will help a lot in this entire story, in this, because uh, we see everything from a different aspect. This would be as a, a geometrical uh, picture, body with different sides, and you need to find your own in order to persevere. Thank you, Snezhana. Uh, Jacqueline and Navy, and then Jacqueline I propose for yes. Barbara to continue with her presentation. Thank you for the time you give us. I would like to 
uh, greet everybody. This, I just got the information today. I didn't know about this. Uh, and I'm very pleased that I joined this. I would like to uh, greet Barbara because we worked together a couple of years ago. We were working with several uh, organizations at the time. And we are still part of that story of social uh, enterprises. But I have to say that uh, certain things do not happen that easy in our environment. I will focus on something which uh, could be done, for example, when it comes to awareness, developing a better world or more activities because we have a global problem, real problem with funding. So we did a couple of years ago a project. We prepared a DAO project. We, um, artists used ways to uh, make art, works of art. So it's really difficult to find bias on one hand. On the second hand, what I establish is that one really needs uh, a really professional team about marketing, uh, something that will help with companies. So, because uh, those who are profit oriented uh, have a different uh, market. So, I see how difficult it is. Uh, after we had an exhibition with 18 artists, with uh, lectures and everything. Uh, I still have this uh, uh, idea that uh, uh, we need to do something. I still have the ways that can be used for works of art. I really, this is something I want to do. But they, they look at me like a freak, even my, my close family. Uh, I just want to share a situation. I'm living. A, a dream different from 90-90% of the people and how to implement that. Susanna, I think, talked about this, about the idea. I even have volunteers. That's why you're one of the regional points uh, and the resource center, so that uh, they will, you will help with the development of the business idea, the testing, and to support this process. I have a strategy. We invited everybody to inform them about this and to, to teach them that not everything is waste. Uh, at the beginning, we had only one positive idea, uh, response. I'm sorry, uh, I have problems hearing her. Could, okay, we have two more uh, presentations, so um, let's... Uh, Nebi, Nebi, uh, Nebi would the, like the to take a floor. To Nebi, yeah. and then... Uh, yes, so that and Jacqueline, we can meet and at the end, separate. We can meet separately because just, now is time, and you know we have more presentations. But I think we have to have a separate meeting. That's all for now. Uh, thank you for your time, and. I hope we'll meet soon again. Thank you, Jacqueline. Maybe I hope you can hear me just briefly. There will be some, there will be presentations, but I'm from the regional center and we've been selected to support the social entrepreneurship. I just wanted to sh share our concept of. Uh, supporting SMEs. We, as an 
We have a foundation and an agency working. This concept was established from the very beginning in 2008, uh, sorry, 1998, 2001, with, with the, uh, the a new law established a possibility, created a possibility uh, uh, for uh, organizations uh, like this to be able to issue uh, invoices. So there are initiatives, there are numerous organizations, including NGOs, who are trying in this area. But everything comes down to initiatives by NGOs or individual initiatives by uh, individuals, people in our municipalities in the regions. Unfortunately, we do not have a systematic defined support that will definitely help the development of uh, real social entrepreneurship that would uh, uh, involve everybody who is a stakeholder. Thank you. That's all. Barbara is really trying to help as part of the project. And this entire project exists for that purpose to help establish that infrastructure of support and systems for support of social and enterprises. And I hope we will manage in doing this. That's why we joined this. Technically, we are supporting everybody who wants to uh, do business. And we have already had activities with different categories of people, women, unemployed, Roma. Uh, but mainly, they are donors' projects. When the donation is over, the project is over. But we would like to have something that will be sustainable and to be su systematically supported. Thank you, Nebi. Barbara? Yes. Thank you, thank you. Very, very important time to discuss. And you know, also I know that uh, this is important that all of us discuss what it is social enterprise, because we have experiences with small, medium enterprises, we have experiences with civic society organizations, but there is no uh, enough experiences with social enterprises. And you know, as, as it was mentioned, not um, each um, uh, uh, green um, enterprise is social enterprise and no, no each individual enterprise is social enterprise and no each um, uh, family enterprise is social enterprise. So this is important to understand what it is and how we can distinguish. And we are working on the strategy and it is time that first time there was uh, the, the, the definition of social enterprises, social entrepreneurship will be mentioned in official uh, policy document. And then we will work on the legislation. And you know, that means that we would like to have some criteria, but also incentives, public support to, 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 for those who would like to become a social enterprise. Now it is like pre Mm, start <laughs> uh, time. We are not still uh, in the blocks to start. It is like pre-start phase. And you know, and uh, when the legislation mm, will be adopted, so it will be probably next year, but also now in the middle of this year, social entrepreneurship strategy will be adopted. So it will be more easier to know who is who. And you know, and also um, uh, fund for uh, for uh, developing social enterprises uh, has been designed by us. Grand scheme, grand scheme was designed, and this um, probably um, uh, competition will start in the September October. So some of you or many of you can apply, but probably. I don't know how many uh, grants will be available, but 506,000 506, uh, euros was, was allocated um, to the grant scheme by EU delegation. But also we try to inspire other strategies like innovation strategy and put social entrepreneurship to this strategy 
to allow to allow uh, fund for innovation to provide grants also for social enterprises. So we really work hard to 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 organize this um, uh, ecosystem, uh, financial support, technical support. Um, uh, uh, products, uh, defining products, services, partnership with local municipalities, public procurement, using um, reserve contracts um, by uh, local municipality to buy your products and services, uh, partnership with private companies, all these elements we have to build for this period. It is uh, 16 months or 16 months left. So time is <laughs> running and we have to work hard to to achieve it and then probably i hope you will be prepared enough to continue all of you will be prepared enough to continue it is like piloting time and we'll build some pilot project local uh, regional center will support us to build connection local municipality and social enterprises will taste this public procurement reserve contracts and you know at least one such pilot project in each regional support center and we will be really more experienced more aware of the processes <laughs>